Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Danielle Folkerts and I am so excited to be a part of Together at Home, a series by Visit Kingston. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am an artist, art educator and arts coordinator living here in Kingston, Ontario. Um, I have been in Kingston for the last four years. I'm actually originally from central Alberta and I have been making art, teaching classes and running workshops for the last 11 years. Uh, I've been teaching in schools. Um, I went to uh, the Alberta College of Art and Design where I did my Bachelor of Fine Arts and there I was painting and doing printmaking and uh, starting to teach and I just love the arts and so wherever I've been I've taken that with me. And uh, after school, I did some artist residencies and there I got some time to create some bodies of work and just uh, develop my art practice. And uh, we ended up moving out here almost four years ago. Um, my partner's in the military and the military brought us to Kingston um, and we've just loved it ever since. It's just an amazing city. Um, it was funny because I had actually never been to Kingston prior to moving here and so uh, while my partner was on course, I said, I want to come visit at least for a week just to check it out before we move across the country. And uh, I spent a whole week in Kingston and I was just blown away. It was It's just such a special place. Um, for someone who my whole life is the arts, I just could not believe um, how much arts and culture is here in Kingston. And uh, I went on kind of a, a little road trip around the city and tried to find as many museums and collectives and galleries as I could. And I honestly felt like every single turn, every street had something. And so uh, I knew that I was gonna fit right in here. So now come back a few years ago, being in Kingston, um, I have, I helped Melissa Eapin run the uh, Kingston Collective, which was a really fun project. And then now I am at the Tet Center for Creativity and Learning. Um, and I do the marketing and programming there. So I love it because I get to work with artists every day um, and it's just really inspiring. So my big focus is teaching art classes. So today I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, my art practice, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a tour through my studio, and then I'm also gonna walk you guys through a really fun project. So if you do have some drawing materials in front of you or some watercolor materials, feel free to get those out, or you can always save this and uh, come back to it and try the project later. Uh, so I'm really excited about it. The project that we're gonna be doing is always a favorite of mine, and I actually teach this project um, for kids and adults, it's a really fun one, and it's my little hoots. <laughs> so I've been painting these little owls for 12 years. Um, they started off mostly in acrylic and mixed media, um, and they developed for a long time, and I honestly think that I paid my way through college selling little hoots. So there you go, there's a fun fact. Um, but they're also a really fun image, so, I will, I'm gonna show you guys that, but before we get our project on, I'm gonna show you where I work. So I am lucky to have a bit of a studio space now um, because I do mostly watercolor and uh, fiber arts, and I also do large scale murals. So you've probably seen some of my pieces around town. Um, I, the last year, have been was working with the city of Kingston and did a mural in the Invista Center. And then I've also done three different murals and installations for Lululemon. Um, I've also done various murals uh, for private residents and uh, local businesses. So that's always really fun. But often some of those murals are, on, are painted on site, but often they're, uh, they need to be done in my studio. <laughs> so I needed space to work. So this is my big space. I'm gonna kind of show you. So as you can see, the first half of it is kind of just open and that's because um, I usually need a lot of space to work. Um, then in the little corner here, if you can kind of see, I've got a little setup. This is where I'm gonna be doing the demo today. And then this is like my little painting nook. So I've got a few pieces here. Um, I like to have a cart because I can just roll it around and paint. Um, and then I always kind of use my bulletin board as like a little bit of a mood board with some of my work and colors, really anything that gets me inspired. 
And then I've got a little workstation here. That's probably where I spend most of my time, to be honest. Um, and then for my classes, um, I have lots of totes and the closets are full of totes um, because I run events all, uh, every single month. So I run uh, modern watercolor workshops, punch needle workshops. Those are the ones I'm mostly focusing on, but I've taught everything from printmaking, ceramics, uh, drawing, a little bit of everything. In addition to the classes, I also sell kits. So I was a little sad because with everything going on, I had to cancel all my spring classes. Um, and I don't wanna lose that community and I want to still stay engaged with my students. So I've actually started to make uh, kits that can be sold to anyone. So normally I would just make kits for my students, um, but I'm gonna have kits available for people that wanna create at home. And then I'm also gonna be working on some online content and courses because that is the way we're going. So one more little section here. This is kind of my like, I don't know, I shouldn't call it an altar, but it's like my all of my favorite things. So I've got all my art books here. Um, I love to collect ceramics, as you can see. I'm a bit of a ceramic hoarder. I've got more downstairs. Um, and then these are my little punch needles. So this is um, one of the courses that I teach and it's really, really fun. It's always a good time. Cool. All right, guys, so. If you're still with me, um, let me know. Oh, love your studio and the view. Thank you. I know, I have a really nice view. I got really lucky. <laughs> um, overall, it's been a really nice uh, studio space. I normally either didn't have a studio or I had a really tiny studio. And to be honest, my art supplies probably filled most of the studio space. So this is the first time I've actually had a space that is really usable and versatile. Um, and when I have big murals that I have to build off site, I actually take everything out of this room. And uh, if you go back into my stories, uh, it's the Traveling Artisan on Instagram, you can see how I've kind of utilized this to build some of the larger murals. I see more people are joining. Hi guys. Yeah, the punch needle is really, really fun. Um, if you're looking for something that's like really relaxing and uh, very like, it's just like a meditation, um, punch needle is really fun. I definitely have a hard time sticking to just one thing. I really love to either be painting or doing fiber arts and I find that they both lend really well to each other. Um, I usually work kind of seasonally. So some months I'll just be painting and then other months I'll be just doing fiber art and I kind of go back and forth. Um, another big series that I work on, which is fiber art, is my uh, Art for the Ocean series, which I actually realized I didn't show you guys them. Um, but they're a combination of weaving, latch hooking, and felting. So you can kind of see them. And they're like coral reefs. So I started the series four years ago um, because I love to scuba dive. Um, so you can kind of see some of the big, big guys. It's all hand dyed local wool. I love supporting local uh, spinners and dyers. So if you uh, do that, contact me because I'm always looking for pretty wool. All right, guys, are you ready to do some painting? I think, I think we should. All right, so you're not gonna, don't mind me. I'm actually gonna be putting my camera up top so you're gonna be seeing what I'm working on. Um, like I said, if you uh, wanna save this for later, uh, you can always get your art supplies out and then we can do the demo together. But I'm gonna show you some of the steps. Uh, it's similar to my modern watercolor workshop, but instead of breaking it all down, I'm just gonna go straight into the demo part and uh, you can see some really fun spots. Oh, I see I'm a diver too. That's awesome. If you are a diver, there is amazing spots in Kingston to do diving. So I do love to travel when I can, but if you can't, um, there's tons of shipwrecks around Kingston, which a lot of people don't know. Um, a fun fact, if you are at the Tet Center, right behind the Tet Center is the old Morton's Brewery Wharf, and it's not very deep. So even if you're just swimming there or snorkeling, you can actually see the old wharf. Um, but if you're diving, it's a really easy shore dive and uh, there's always like the big sheep's head there and fish and fun little things. So uh, definitely do that because it's a really, really fun spot. So that was a big surprise when I moved to Kingston. All right, so let's start this, guys. Don't mind me. All right, here's a little setup. So you may end up having to move your phone a little bit over. I hope that this is okay. Here are a couple of the samples that I have for you guys today. 
I'm gonna keep playing with this, make sure you can see it okay. So as you can see with the little hoots, they're really versatile and I just find them really fun because you can try a lot of different techniques with them. Uh, these ones have some of the leaves, but I'm gonna make something similar like this, which are kind of fun. All right, let's go guys. So um, normally when I start my watercolor paper uh, or painting, sorry, you want to stretch your paper out. So I'm just using a masonite board, but you can honestly put, tape it to a wall, to a table, um, or any other board that you have. Um, and then just using some green painter's tape, uh, you want to make sure that you put all four sides down and secure your paper. This is gonna create a really nice frame, but it's also going to make sure that when the paper is wet, that it straightens out once it's dry. So I've already done that. So as you can see, I've already lightly sketched out an image. Um, I thought what I could do for those of you that wanna learn how to draw them, I would actually just um, do a pencil drawing, or sorry, a Sharpie drawing for you, just so you can actually see prior. So it's already drawn, but I'm gonna skip that step. <clears throat> so the owls are really, really easy. I like them because if you break it down, um, they're fun to walk through. So I love the little hoots because you can do one owl, you can do two owls, you can do three, four, however many you want. Um, I'm going to do the one with the two just because, you know, we're all a little lonely right now. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So how you're gonna start is you kind of want to, with your hands, know where your owls are gonna be. So they can be the same size or they can be a different size. I'm just gonna kind of wing it a little bit. So that's my first potato shape. And then my second, I always like to do a big and a little one, but you can do whatever size that you like. So you just wanna start with two different circles or ovals. And then from there, I'm gonna give them their big eyes. So the big eyes are what really make them quite cute. So I start kind of with the top just to map them out. And then I make some big, beautiful eyes. There we go. I leave a little bit of room. And I've got some cute little, little eyes there. And then I just connect two lines at the bottom for a nose. And then the same thing with the wings. I love this image because for beginners or for kids, um, it's, it's fun to kind of put together. And then I give them two little Batman ears. And they're getting together. You can make little feet. The nice thing when you're doing watercolor is that your drawing doesn't matter too much um, because you can paint over it, but it just gives you a nice guideline. So I've got my two little owls and now I'm just gonna add a little bit of a branch. So it's kind of a nice horizontal line there and the bottom and I'm gonna add some branches. So there we go. And I always find that the little uh, pupils are the cutest part because you can make them looking at each other. So that lies a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is draw a little circle so that they're gonna be looking at each other. When you're doing watercolor painting, you don't wanna actually color in an area because you wanna paint that area. So you're just doing an outline. I'm gonna do like a little highlight. And that's a pretty good start. Um, so I'm not gonna worry about all of the little details because those are gonna be things that I'm gonna paint in after. I just wanna have um, the layout of the drawing. So this is what I've already done on my watercolor paper. So I hope that helps. I'm gonna also film um, this in a little bit of a longer tutorial and put it up on my YouTube next week. So if you do want a better uh, tutorial of it, please feel free to follow that. I actually, where did I go? There we go. If you want, there you go. Danielle Folkerts, you can go to my website. I'll put that back up here. All right, so to get started, let's see, perfect. I've got my board taped down. I've got a cup of water. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. I've got a couple different brushes and my paint set 
And then I also have some paper towel. As you can see, I've already used it, but I find that I reuse this for quite a few sessions because it just dries and you can keep reusing it. Um, if you're a beginner, the set that I always recommend is um, this set here that is Jack Richardson, and this is the set that I sell in my kits. It's really a nice paint. Um, you can also buy it at Art Noise, um, but it's a honey-based paint, and so it's really uh, kind of like juicy and has some really beautiful, vibrant colors, um, and so this is a really nice beginner paint. The ones that I'm using today are um, M. Graham and Daniel Smith. They're a little bit higher quality, um, but I used to work at an art store, so I got a lot of I got I stocked up on a lot of art supplies. All right, so when I'm gonna do my painting, I like to paint in sections. Sometimes people will um, wash the whole uh, painting over, but the nice thing about watercolor painting is that there's so many different ways that you can approach a painting, and um, none of them are wrong. It's just different ways. So I'm gonna start by mixing a little bit of brown. Uh, for the actual owls. And the nice thing about my beginner watercolor class is that we work through a bunch of different techniques. So as you can see here, um, we go through a whole technique sheet and we kind of break it down so that you understand um, about the different techniques. And then something like this is the value scale. So with watercolor, it's transparent. And when you add water to the paint and the pigment, you're gonna get um, watercolor that's like this. So this is a value. So when you get these darker colors, that means that there's more pigment mixed into the water. When it's really light, that just means that there's uh, more water. So when you're mixing it up, you can, in your palette, decide if you want it to be really dark, just add more pigment, or if you want it really light, just add a lot of water. And now you can mix other colors right in your palette. Notice how I'm always mixing my paint in my palette. I don't usually mix right out of here unless I want a really, really uh, dark, dark color. Awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna just start laying out some of these areas. And the one thing with watercolor, people often get kind of intimidated by it because it's hard to fix mistakes or they feel like um, it can just be a little bit overwhelming, but the, you just kind of need to know how to use it. So in my classes, I really try to give you a lot of tools and tips and the skills so that you feel confident doing it at home. Um, but the biggest thing you need to remember with uh, watercolor is that there's no white, so you have to use the white of the paper. I'd say kind of the biggest beginner mistake I see is people painting the whole sheet and not leaving any white, and then they kind of get sad because they, uh, they just can't get any white back. So bigger brushes obviously cover a little bit more area, and I'm just painting wet on dry right now. So you can paint wet on wet, which I'm gonna show you how to do, but this one is just dry. So this gives me more control and the paint is gonna go wherever I take it. And you can go outside the lines, that's totally fine. The nice thing is, is that you can actually erase all of those uh, uh, pencil lines after. And so you just wanna keep shaping your little owl. So I'm gonna go around the eyes and clean those up a little bit. I'm actually trying a little bit of a different paper that has more of a texture. So in watercolor, there's three different types of papers you can use. There is uh, cold press, hot press, and rough. This is cold press, so it has a little bit of a texture to it. It's probably the most common one. Uh, hot press is a really smooth paper, so if you wanna do more realistic things with really fine detail, you probably want a hot press paper. I always think of it like an iron, so. And then rough is just really, really textured. So if you want with this while it's still wet, you can actually start to poke in little bits. And when it's wet, it'll just keep moving and kind of blooming out a little bit as you can see. So you can kind of add those darker colors if you want and add a little bit of texture to your owl. There you go. 
The nice thing with watercolor is that you can just keep layering it. So this is gonna be my first layer and I'll decide if I want to do another layer or not. You can do uh, some of these paintings just in one go or um, you can, uh, over a couple hours or a couple days, um, you can slowly build up your painting. So it's really, really versatile. I personally never started with watercolors. I started with acrylic and oil. And about six or seven years ago, I discovered that I really enjoyed doing watercolor and I took a few courses in Calgary. And I just fell in love with it because really, I, I always found with, um, with acrylic that I wanted to have a really big setup and it was kind of a whole, whole ordeal to set up and do. And with watercolor, honestly for like 50 bucks you can get everything you need and you can do it absolutely anywhere so i love to go outside with my watercolors do some plein air painting i also love to travel and paint so my favorite spot is italy and i've gone three times recently just to paint so i did a residency there and then um, i just kind of did some painting trips there where i go around and paint and sketch and get ideas for the studio. So I feel like a lot of artists sometimes find places that really inspire them and get them excited to create. And that's, that's the space that gets me excited to create. All right, so I'm just starting to build that up. But the nice thing with working in sections is that by the time I'm done working over here and I'm working here, this is already drying. So it's nice when you're painting kind of quickly to work in those sections so that it has time to dry. And again, notice how because it's wet and I, I can't get it darker because it just keeps to blend out, it keeps blending out. So if I want to start building up that value, I actually need to let it dry and then add another layer to start building up those nice dark tones. All right. I'm gonna give them little feet. so. With this one, I'm gonna do obviously a f this faster, but some of these paintings, sometimes I spend two or three hours on. So the more time you spend on it, the more detail you can get. So the next thing that I'm gonna show you guys is wet into wet, which is a really fun um, technique. And what that is, is you're gonna actually wet your whole background. So. Wet into wet is great. It's a little unpredictable, but this is honestly my favorite um, technique to show people. And this is, this is the technique that I use the most in my own practice when I'm painting skies or anything go here and it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to wet a little bit so I'm going to mix a couple colors in here I'm a bit of a messy painter but that's fine so as you can see when I start to apply the paint that it blooms out and I love it because the paint will mix really well together. So I don't over blend it. I really try to let the paint go where it wants to. You can just kind of pop it in a little bit and that will blend it up a bit nicer. When it's wetted to wet, um, you can get some really fun and unexpected outcomes which I think is why it's so much fun and the only reason I'm avoiding this area right now here you'll notice I'm kind of leaving a little bit of a white line it's just because this was still wet so if they're both wet they're gonna bleed into each other a little bit so it's okay to leave a little bit of a line or you can go up right to the edge too so you can do a little bit of negative painting just around to start to shape out those little owls and it's nice because I mean, when I do the beginner class, we break out each step individually so that you really get it. But once you start kind of painting a lot more, you'll find that you're using two or three techniques kind of simultaneously. Um, and that's kind of the joy of watercolor. 
So you can kind of blend those in and just see how, how fun this starts to go. And as long as it's wet, it will keep moving and moving and moving. So it, you really don't know what it's gonna look like until the very end. And it'll actually draw, dry a lot lighter as well. And I love kind of bringing some of these tones into each other. I'd say my biggest tip with watercolor is just make it look intentional. You'll make some mistakes sometimes, and that's totally normal, especially when you're starting out. Um, you're gonna learn the most from failing at it. <laughs> um, but it's really fun and I find it really relaxing. Um, my classes, I really try to give you a lot of tools and tricks and tips to um, really understand how to use watercolor and um, and I think that it's been really exciting and I've been teaching for so long now that I get, you know, students that have been painting for five, six, seven years and just to see how how much they've grown and, and their practice has grown and I think that's probably my favorite part about, about teaching. So notice now with the branch that I'm actually doing a little bit of negative painting. So I'm painting around the branches and I'm actually carving out branches just by the negative painting. Negative painting is probably my favorite thing. <laughs> there we go. And you can always change it, right? You can always do more layers on top if you're not liking it. Um, I'm only gonna have time to really show you guys um, that the first initial layer. Um, but like I said, I'll hop on next week and do a longer tutorial. And I'll do it time lapse too, because then you can see it a little bit faster. Um, and then I'll show you guys how to kind of build up the layers of this image. Because as you can see um, with the details of this is that you want to start to layer things a lot. So you actually have to let it dry for a little bit before you can continue those layers. That's why sometimes it might take you two or three hours to do a painting. Um, but this is a nice start just for that first layer. went with an interesting mood, but that's okay. I guess I'm kind of feeling like fall a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just go with the eyes right now, just cause I know that we're running out of time. <clears throat> so with the eyes, I love to leave a little bit of um, a white shine in there, just cause it makes them look a little bit cuter. So I'm gonna go in with a small brush and I'm gonna to start to just carve out those eyes. And like I said, I'm gonna take a little bit of time to uh, layer that up to make it a bit darker. You can use black. Um, I mean, you can do this, the little owls in any medium. If you do these owls, please tag me. I would love to see and repost your uh, creations, whether you did some drawing or painting at home. Like I said, you can do it in any medium. So there's a little twinkle in their eyes, which is kind of cute. So you'll notice with watercolors that you can kind of just tap those colors in and it gives it this really nice little fade. And I'm going brown and blue versus black in this just because it's a little bit more interesting. And they're gonna be looking at each other. Maybe they're just, they've been isolated and they just wanna hang out. I hope you guys are all doing well. I know it's been a cu tough couple of weeks, um, but I'm super grateful for being able to have art in my life and see other people use art, whether it's singing or painting or writing. Um, I think it's a pretty powerful tool to have um, in your life if you can use it. And you don't have to be good at it to enjoy it. You know, it's just meant to be an outlet and to be fun. And it's a great way to express yourself. Um, so if you're not doing anything creative at home, I highly recommend it because you'll find it very, very relaxing. So there's their little eyes. I'm going to do their little tummy quickly for you. I'll show you guys how to do a graded wash, which is kind of a fun, fun one. So I always find with this that I love to give them like different colored tummies because it almost is like they have different personalities. <laughs> I have to say some of the kid uh, classes that I've taught doing this, they, they just are so creative and have the most uh, fun designs. 
So, all right. I kind of like to swipe the bottom just to give them that dark tummy and then I fade it out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna clean your brush and you're gonna just pull the paint up. So with water, that paint is gonna pull up and clean it again and slowly pull that up and it kind of creates this little fade. Here we go, like a little funny one, hey? And if you wanna punch some color in there too, you can. You can just blend it in a little bit if you wanna give it a little bit more color. Sometimes just using one color is a bit dull. It is fun to mix colors. There we go. I'm getting a nice little tummy. How are you guys doing? I see more people on. I know that I have to wrap this up soon here, but I'm just gonna try doing one more little tummy and then um, and then I'll let you guys go. But I hope that this has been kind of a fun idea anyways, or an image to do. I know that there's a lot of parents at home right now that are looking for projects to do at home. And um, the Little Hoots is definitely a fun image for kids um, to do but also adults, not gonna lie guys, adults love little hoots. So again, I love mixing in some of these colors. I, I might've messed this up because I am doing it the same background, but that's okay. I'm gonna take that water and I'm gonna slowly push it up, clean my brush, and then using that water again, pushing it up and kind of carving out their little eyes. So I'll put my website and stuff here too for you guys. So um, you can follow me on Instagram at the traveling artisan. That's where I post most of my stuff. I do demos. Um, I talk about upcoming projects, artwork, um, courses, and then I have the Traveling Artisan Workshops, which is a page that is mostly dedicated to my students and their beautiful work. Um, and you can check out classes that are coming up there too. And then on my website, I have a blog and I write about um, pretty much anything arts, education, travel related, um, which is really fun. So I always really appreciate uh, everybody and I love seeing what everybody else is doing. So I feel pretty lucky that I get to do this for a living. Here's a fun fact, look at this mistake. So because <laughs> I applied um, some paint here and this was wet, it'll touch it and it'll bleed out. So if that happens, don't worry. You can take a clean brush and you can actually just kind of like mop that up a little bit and fade it out. So there are lots of little tricks in my classes that I try to teach you um, just so that you know how to troubleshoot things. Um, or how to avoid mistakes. But like I said, if you can be at home and paint and also just make mistakes at home, you'll learn really quickly, um, you know, what you can do, uh, what you can't do, and what you can get away with. But now that these are uh, dry, I can start to draw some of these fun little details in too. So you can draw in some of the little textures Again, really depending on how much time you have is what you're gonna get. So if you're gonna spend half an hour on this versus two hours, you'll get a very different result. So if you're at home, just play, just experiment and play with it. Uh, I'm gonna slowly kind of carve out a little bit more detail. And once you start adding these top layers where you're adding a little bit more definition and value, you'll start to really carve out um, these little hoots and they just kind of come to life and they're so cute. I love doing different marks to give them a little bit of texture. And then the same thing with the branches, you can go in and you can always draw more branches too on top of each other. So this is where the, the layering really comes into effect. I, uh, if I wanted to do more leaves, I would have drawn out the leaves before on there uh, so it just depends what kind of image you're trying to build. 
Notice how I leave a lot of little white bits in there. And I really like that because I feel like it adds a little bit of a highlight. Um, I'm going to do one more quick little layer on here on the eye. Because if you can really get those eyes to pop, that's when the little hoots get super cute. So again, you can do lots of layers. And mix those colors up. I'll, uh, in the tutorial, I'll show you guys how to uh, do some greenery around these guys and make them a little bit more, uh, a little bit more vibrant. But this is what we've got with the time that we've done, <laughs> um, which is all right. I think that's not too bad for like, a, you know, 10, 10, 20 minute painting. Like I said, this is probably just a first layer. Um, so I could let this sit and then build up way more layers. So um, as you can see something like this, um, I spent a lot more time and I had more time to do details, but again, use the time that you have. I hope that this has been helpful. I wanna see your guys' um, paintings at home and uh, just keep painting. I, like I said, tag me uh, and uh, show me your creations. And thank you guys so much for having me. Um, thank you for looking into my studio. I love seeing everybody's comments. Thank you so much, Carolina. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, and I will hopefully see you guys soon. Have a great one. Bye, guys.